your secrets if you really look at yourself you will be speechless what happened to being doctors and teachers what happened to activate <laughs> Yo, this is Ludacris. What's going on? This is Drake. This Tiger Young Money Zone. It's your boy Wiz Khalifa, man. This is Big Sean. Yo, what's up, y'all? This is Kanye West. It's Jay-Z. Yo, this is your boy Weezy. You're in the mix. With the DJ always banging the real hip-hop. DJ Bullcrap. Now I gotta play with you and shit. Damn, man. Been down and out? Fuck! Been down and out? Oh, my God. The street's going crazy. Now the same hole that be choosing me. Been down and out, broke and disgusted. Now I'm paper chasing, you can't tell me nothing. The same people used to shit on me. Be the same people see me out in public. And bitches play and tell me that I'm ugly. Said I'm fat and just a little too chubby. Now them same hoes that be choosing me. See me in the streets and wanna fuck me. Now I'm fresh to say, okay, from being dusty. Come from gold pieces, now my shit be flooded. Cash and ass, only thing I'm touching. Designer clothes, pushing something luxury. Roll the back wood, fill my cup with mud. Got a classic bitch, let me treat her slut. Give a strange look, she wants to say she loving, babe. I just be thugging and I came from nothing. Bitch, down and now, broke and disgusted. Look at me now, straight flexing. Remember days, couldn't get no play. Now them ratchet hoes wanna sex me. As I went through life, always taught me lessons. You can't change, man. Ain't no point in stressing. Wake up every day, that's a step progressing. Treat every loss like another blessing. Remember, rolling up skills, going half on blunt. Breaking all the roaches down, couldn't make a chunt. Now it's back wood, feel to the rim with rust. It's out of trees, make you sneeze, that'll kill a skunk. I had a pole whip, nigga had to tie the trunk. Had people laugh at me, dog, got my shit a dump. Now I hit the block, stop, yeah, just a thud. Turn the speakers up loud, they can hear the bump. Remember days on the blade, I can play a bit. Remember dice game fights, every nigga nick. Break up broke as a joke, get up, chase a chick. Just to stay high, fly high like a jet. No sleeping days, ain't no pain and rest. Cross some paths with some suckers, I can say I'm blessed. I ain't in no cage, dog, or no food for best. And my men are gang strong, definitely in the test. It's a cave from nothing, that's where I'm from. Now you see the light, bouncing off my charm. If you think it's bright, you should see my arm. I be draped in carriage like I own a farm. I be dressed in black, please don't be alone. Black peak coat, bow tie the dawn. I'm gonna be face to face, and I can see your palm. And the money right, we gon' keep it calm Been down and out, broke and disgusted Now I'm paper chasing, you can't tell me nothing The same people used to shit on me Be the same people see me out in public And bitches play and tell me that I'm ugly Said I'm fat and just a little too chubby Now them same hoes, they be choosing me See me in the streets and wanna fuck me Now I'm fresh to say, okay, from being dusty Come from gold pieces, now my shit be flooded Cash and ass, only thing I'm touching Designer clothes, pushing something luxury Roll the back wood, fill my cup with mud Got a classic bitch, let me treat her slut Give a strange look, she wants to say she loves Loving, babe. I just be thuggin' and I came from nothing. Pro can't discuss it, been there before. My mind tired, feet moving slow. Had some niggas turn their back on me, them the same niggas I was callin' bro. Now the same niggas shootin' at my bitch. Yeah, the same bitch, they would call a hoe. Got my hustle up, did it by the stove. From a half a house to a quarter bow. From a quarter bow to a whole thing. Then eating breakfast with the bow, man. Progressive speech is smoking propane. Reminiscing about the cold game. How would she get ugly here to leave a stain? But ain't no glory, man, without the pain. I went to sleep, eating wrong. And noodles, but I woke up eating low mic. Got some shit on my chest, I'ma let it out. Everything that I touch, bitch, I set it out. Come from the darkness, I bet it out. Run my feet up the street, I'ma steady ball. I was running this race like a hillis dog. Just scratching the surface, couldn't bite a ball. Now I go outside, I can touch the salt. And I shine bright, rather light a dog. Bitch, I came from nothing, that's where I'm from. Now you see the light bouncing off my charm. If you think this bright, you should see my arm. I be draped in carriage like I own a farm. I be dressed in black, please don't be alarmed. Black pea coat, bow tie the dawn. I'm going face to face, and I can see. Your palm and the money right, we gon' keep it calm. Been down and out, broke and disgusted. Now I'm paper chasing, you can't tell me nothing. The same people used to shit on me, be the same people see me out in public. And bitches play and tell me that I'm ugly. Said I'm fat and just a little too chubby. Now them same hoes, they be choosing me. See me in the streets and wanna fuck me. Now I'm fresh to say, okay, from being dusty. Come from gold pieces, now my shit be flooded. Cash and ass, only thing I'm touching. Designer clothes, pushing something luxury. Roll the back wood, fill my cup with money. Got a classic bitch, let me treat her slut. Give a strange look, she wants to Say she love me, babe. I just be thugging and I came from nothing. You know what I really think deep down inside? I think that Michael B. Jordan is just like a nice, corny guy. And I don't mean that as a slight, right? I mean, we all know that the nice, corny guys treat you the best. You know what's so crazy? I went to school with Michael B. Jordan at a point in life. And we went to Chad Science together in Newark. And to be honest with you, we teased him all the damn time because his yeah. name was Michael Jordan. Like, <laughs> let, like, let's start there. And he was no Michael Jordan. And then he also would come to school with headshots. And back then, that was like, in in the hood, we lived in Newark. Yeah. Like that, that's the hood, you know what I mean? So 
it, it, we would make fun of him like, oh, what you got to do with your little stupid headshots? Like, and now look at <laughs> and him. And now look at him. He got <laughs> like phantom money. Well, yeah, I did. Uh, exactly. I missed <laughs> my boy. I, I could have been, been in the aquarium swimming with the fishes, but <laughs> with you your know, stock or whatever. And, no, you yeah, instead, I'm swimming in Mexico by myself, child. But anyway, uh, <laughs> he gives me cookie cutter. And the only time yeah. I hung out with Michael B was like in, L- in LA, like at you know, right. like Jay's house. And he's always just very like he's just cool I think he's too he's rich to cool. have to be hood now like you right. just be, boy if you don't take him millions and and, and go to and go to hermes and get some stuff i miss <laughs> my boy So, Shell, we got Michael B. Jordan, the director and the star of Creed 3. And, you know, we know each other. We go way back all the way to Chad Science in Newark, okay? You're a corny kid, right? <laughs> no, <laughs> I did not say that. Misquoted for sure. So, you did not hear me say I said we used to make fun of the name. But, yeah, he is obviously killing things out here. So, Shell, we got Michael B. Jordan. Now you good, Mama. So what you do to your ex that you regret? Um, I, as soon as I said my name, I said I should have said it was anonymous. But I regret cheating on him. That means you still with him? No, no, no. I'm with my husband that I cheated on him with. Oh, it was boy, goodness gracious. So you, so you regret like having a husband? Like things worked out for you, see? Right. Can y'all stop? No, but he was such a nice guy. She just said so she I regrets her husband. Better, like, broke up. And now, if I'm your husband, I'm mad. You regret that? That means you we not together anymore. No. No, that sounds bad. See, this, I should have never called in for this topic. You shouldn't have called in. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. You don't deserve happiness. You know what I mean? Yes, and I'm going to tell you please. why you don't deserve happiness. She, she she says she regrets being married to her husband That's now right. and talking about she missed her ex. And he's a good guy. And he's a good guy. Come first on, of man. All, first of all, don't be, open star, don't be living a fan out here. That's not true. What happened? What happened was... I feel bad just because he's a nice guy. Mm-hmm. He was friends first and I cheated on him, but I love my husband. I'm happy. You still thinking about him? Is. Go see him one more time, girl. Heck, not see him. So, Heck no. I don't think about him at all. So what made you marry the, the, the husband? Oh, because he's amazing. He, you know, nice guys finish uh, lives. My husband is like, he, he's rough. You know, I like that. If you get married, Damn. that's so foul. If you, if you oh cheat on me so foul. and marry the guy you cheated on me with, don't ever think about me ever again. Word. I don't want to ever hear you I don't think about him. Married. I don't. I just feel bad. You just called talking bit, about him. But... You, you all thinking about him. With you your, with your real name. So yeah, that's so hey, if you put her last name out there. Y- y- hey, no, because we got call ID. Say her full name. What's her full name, yo? What's her full name? What's her full name? Tell me. You want to know? Yes. You really want to know? Yes. Y- yes. So Cash at me a hundred dollars right now. Or I'm putting your full name out there. <laughs> but some reason you are worth thirty. You worth all, you got a two hundred million dollar contract, and you want people in the NBA to think you hood, to think you gangster, because you roll with these type of people. Bro, you putting yourself in harm's way when you don't have to. Nobody looks at you, John. Think, man, that's a thug. He hood. <laughs> he down. He bought that. You not. Stop pretending. All you do is yap and talk about, oh, I'm going to let him live to see another day. I'm going to do this. You're not going to do nothing. What you're going to do is get yourself in trouble, put yourself and your family in harm's way when you don't have to. Just play basketball. If you want to do all that chirping and all that about y'all good, how great y'all, even though your record indicate since you made your statement, Dylan Brooks made his statement, you've been awful. Have at that. I got no problem. I, I wish you wouldn't talk so much considering mm-hmm. y'all talk so much to have done so little. That's a part of it. I get that. But this, 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 what you're going about, pretending like you, like you down like that, like you talk, that you carry, bruh, you putting yourself in harm's way. Mm-hmm. And it's not a good look for you. Stop this, man. This is not you. You, you, I mean, you, you played basketball to get out of this environment. You could, hey, I guarantee you got homeboys. You say that's your fam. You tweet that that's your fam. That probably had talent like you, but they chose that life. Bro, you need to let that go. Because that's not you. It's not. You pretend like you hard, but you're not, John. All right, y'all. So we back. Welcome to a, another Band Clap TV rant video. Um, 
excuse the i don't know if it's going to pick up on the microphone but i'm outside um recording this so might be some some rain might be some some thunder sounds but um if anything it'll just add some some ambiance to the video <laughs> so before i get started um i just want to show my appreciation to everybody who checked out my podcast about shadow work game pretty part two is coming very soon it's been it's been kind of crazy uh being down here had to supplement my income doing some dashing and stuff and um and i got some got some hella stories with that as well so definitely stay tuned um when i have some some free time and i see different subjects and stuff like that that i feel like that i can add some insight on i'm just gonna uh whip out my phone and record some voice notes and uh hit y'all with some of these rant videos i don't know how long this is gonna be i don't really have a whole whole lot to say about this particular subject um the only reason why i'm covering it is because of a recent situation that actually happened with me someone made a comment on one of my videos i would say probably like december of last year and um I think it was my Yemoya video or it was one of the videos where I put a mix up that had me on it and um and somebody commented and they was like you know I love your content or some something something but this mix is corny and I was like huh this is my first time ever getting a someone who doesn't like my mixes and you know for them to say that uh you make good content but the mix was corny I was like hmm so you know I went in and looked at the person's channel and just like I thought, you know, this person, they're not, they're not really doing anything. You know, they're, they don't really have a, a YouTube channel like that. They're not really talking about nothing. They only got like one or two videos that only got like 30 views. <laughs> so I wrote it off that, that they're a troll, you know, cause, cause that's what that was. And, you know, I don't, I don't keep negativity like that on my platform. So that comment is no longer available. So I was scrolling on Instagram um looking at different reels and stuff like that i came across the reel that the audio is from that's at the beginning of this uh video you know a lot of people have been talking about this and i just want to give my opinion about it so apparently i guess michael b jordan was at this event or something like that i guess you know this has something to do with creed or whatever and he's being interviewed by this lady and apparently this lady is somebody that he knew you know somebody that he used to go to school with and all that type of stuff and he recognized her i couldn't really hear what he actually said but from what everybody else has been saying as far as with their reactions and stuff like that apparently he was like oh you know i remember you you know you was the one that used to call me corny man or something like that and then she was like yeah i used to make fun of your name and i never called you that or something like that and you know how the internet is <laughs> you know how the internet is they went and found receipts so the internet when it found some receipts of an old interview that she did where um where she was actually agreeing to sentiments of him being called corny you know talking about how they grew up together you know they were in the hood uh at school and all that type of stuff and you know how michael b jordan you know he always used to get teased because of his name you know number one and then number two you know michael b jordan he always knew even as a kid in school he always knew that he was going to end up being a star you know he always knew he was going to end up being a uh actor and he was going to be a famous actor and all that stuff so uh he would come to school with professional headshots and stuff like that and uh she used to be one of the people that would that would ridicule him because he would bring these headshots to school acting as if he's already a big shot actor even though he's just in school now we know as adults when it comes to uh manifesting you know when it comes to manifestation and stuff like that a lot of times the fastest way for you to manifest is for you to act like whatever it is that you're trying to do whatever it is that you're trying to get once you do your uh, ritual once you pray on it or whatever you do you got to act like you already have it you know you have to act like it's already in your reality so this was something that michael b jordan was doing as a child and as you can see it worked and um you know this was some of the things that was in this recording this was this was very interesting you know very interesting not only that i posted another clip about this uh breakfast club interview about this woman who you know she cheated on her husband with her ex simply because her ex had a lot more quote-unquote edge and man when i tell you i got i got so many clips of this of uh women cheating on their their husbands women cheating on their boyfriends with their ex or with 
like a street dude or a hood dude. And then we find out that the person that is being cheated on is actually a good dude. And they, they actually say that too. They be like, yeah, uh, he was a good dude. He was nice. He took care of me. He took care of the kids, all this type of stuff. And um, it's always a, a underlying thing about being corny. It's always an underlying thing about that. So I've been just doing some analyzing and I'm going to give y'all some analogies to think about. The crazy part about it is, it's like, the way I be coming up with this stuff in my head, um, you would think that I was a battle rapper. <laughs> you would think that I was a battle rapper, the way I'm able to flip these words and uh, flip these names and all this type of stuff. Now, first of all, one person that I seen talked about this was none other than Joe Budden. And uh, he had a very, very interesting response about this. I don't know what he's talking about. Honestly, he sounds very, very passionate about what he's saying. Um, he's talking about Michael B. Jordan shouldn't have talked, quote unquote, talked to her like that. I'm like, what did he say? You know, he only said like like one thing and then he kind of left it alone and just answered her regular questions. Like, I don't know what maybe Joe Button heard a different version of the interaction than what we did or something. <laughs> and um, and it's like every time I hear uh, Joe Button try to talk tough and all of that, I just think about that clip of him singing that Munch song by uh, Ice Spice. And you know he got the little, the little neck rolling, and he got the little, the little, uh, the little hand, the little arm, you know, uh, bent arm, and all that type of stuff. <laughs> you know, sound sounding uh, very sus, sounding very, very sus. You know, that's number one. And number two, um, I think about his 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 relationship with his, um, I don't know if it's his ex wife or his ex girlfriend or whatever, because I don't really keep up with these. Uh, celebrities like that but um the only reason why i know about it is because she was extremely beautiful extremely beautiful and i remember how um they would they would fight you know they would argue a lot because he didn't want to be intimate with her and she's beautiful i'm like yo yo sh her her she is super beautiful you know like like <laughs> You know, any other guy wouldn't be able to, to, to keep their hands off her. You know, she's like that dessert that you got to you got to discipline yourself to not overindulge. You don't want to have to keep going to the dentist to get your cavities removed and all that type of stuff. And he didn't want to have sex with her. You know, that was that was already a red flag. So so I, I've been I've been giving Joe Button the Scorpio side eye for a minute, you know, so I don't, I don't really I don't really take his opinions like that, you know, um, as the gospel. But. As the wordsmith that I am, I want to break this word down, you know, break this word corny down. And I want to give some um, some different insights and stuff like that that you're probably not going to hear from anyone else. And then I want to talk about some of my experiences, because being honest with you, I've been called a lot of things and corny haven't been one of them. Even as a kid uh, coming up, I've been called a lot of names. I've been called a lot of names. Even my inner child, the baby SU, that's the one word that he don't like. He don't like being called corny. And I think that's the reason why my inner child created me in a certain type of way. The way I was raised up, being raised up by a whole bunch of men. <laughs> Eight uncles on my father's side and three uncles on my mother's side. And, and my father being a very strong-willed man, you know, being a very uh, feared man, you know, in my neighborhood and all of that type of stuff. So being raised up in that type of divine masculine environment, you learn a lot of uh, codes, you learn a lot of principles, you learn a lot of rules and things like that. The one thing that I was glad about my life that I was always taught and I was always raised up to be my own person. Even though <laughs> I really, really took that to the extreme about being my own person to the point where um, I, I started doing things that is outside of the mode that, that my family would, would have wanted me to go or whatever but in the end when i look at a lot of these uh young guys now and everything that they're doing they're trying to fit in and they're trying to be like the joneses they're trying to be like the status quo and and they're scared to be who they really are and they get taken advantage of and all that type of stuff it makes me think more and more about how i was raised up it makes me very appreciative of how i was raised up even though you know, being raised up by all those men, it was tough, but it's what made me resilient like I am today. So let's talk about corn. So corn is something that's yielded from a plant called maize, M-A-I-Z-E, -E, maize. Now, from what I researched about corn, you now some people say that 
that corn is a man-made plant you know some people say that it was it was engineered you know one thing that we can't deny is that especially when when we was in school and and we learned about the indigenous uh indians and the indigenous native americans one of the main things that they brought to this land was corn you know was was maize it was the building block of a lot of a lot of different products you know a lot of different foods a lot of different things was made from corn you know from the husk um to the seeds all that type of stuff and even when we look at um the foods that that we eat today corn plays a huge role in it whether it's the high fructose corn syrup whether it's the corn flour popcorn like corn is a building block of just about all the foods that we consume today so let's go deeper a lot of people that are considered corny we find out as they grow up you know just like as the the maize plant grows the corn starts to appear a lot of people that that we look at as corny a lot of them grow up to be amazing people if they can hold on to the things that made them corny you got maize you have amazing and then you have mason we know that masonry is the building block of this society you know masonry whether we're talking about linguistic masonry whether we're talking about the masonry as far as the way buildings are built the way cities are plotted out and all that stuff you can't say that any industry in this world is not affected by masonry just like i can say that there's not really a lot of different foods especially processed foods that that we've grown to love that in some type of way corn isn't in it <laughs> because corn is a abundant type of plant or whatever so they had to put corn in a lot of different things just like uh, masonry in order for you to be a builder in any type of way you have to have some type of, of masonry training just like hollywood you got to be in a masonic order a masonic uh, society if you want to be a carpenter you got to be in a masonic society if you want to be a police officer that's supposed to keep law and order there's a uh, society called the fraternal order of the police that you have to be a part of which is masonic if you want to be a part of the society in general you have to be a part of a sorority or a fraternity which is also a masonic order now i bet you're thinking you know how does a corny person and someone who's a mason how can you draw that parallel well think about it like this a lot of times when we think about someone who's corny what are the things that these quote-unquote corny people are super super interested in a lot of times they're interested in math they're interested in technology they're interested in science they're interested in english they're interested in different abstract arts and abstract uh paintings and artists and things like that a lot of times they're interested in politics and government a lot of times they're not necessarily into the sport a lot of times they're interested in the intricacies of the way the sport is run you know the way the sport is played and all that stuff you know a corny person you know he would be the type of guy you wait on him to shoot the ball and he's over here with a tape measure and a ruler trying to figure out the square root of the x y and all that type of stuff <laughs> trying to create the perfect equation for the shot and all that type of stuff a lot of times people who we look at as corny as well when we talk about the entertainment and hollywood side of things you know a lot of times these are the people who are the most into the occult part of it than the actual front and flash of it that a lot of the quote-unquote cool people are in so the ones that are really really throwing up the signs and really really you can tell they're really into the rituals and they're really throwing up the boffer man and they're really really into the occult side of it a lot of those people were looked at as corny in school i bet you now all of those different subjects that i said are all subjects that are heavily heavily involved in masonry so what am i saying the reason why corny people end up being amazing people end up being a mason people when they get older is because out the gate their interest is in the different subjects that represents the building blocks that keeps this world going around and as long as this is something that you're interested in and this is something that you want to be great in you're always going to be able to make money you're always going to be able to stay afloat financially and you're always going to be able to stay surrounded by powerful individuals even though to everybody else you may seem powerless now as we know about corn and stuff like that when a certain type of corn is forged in the fire you got certain type of corn that pops you got certain type of corn that pops 
and we call that popcorn. And once the popcorn is created, you put butter on it. You know, some people put caramel on it and all that type of stuff. And for all my old school cats, this is how Cracker Jacks are created. And as we know, Cracker Jacks, they have a prize inside their container, inside their box or whatever. Now, <laughs> I bet y'all like, you know, what, what does this have to do with uh, people who are considered corny? Well, let me explain it to you like this. If a person coming up in school and stuff like that, and they're attracted to certain math and sciences and English and technology and computers and all of that type of stuff, if they can maintain a hard exterior like that popcorn kernel, if they can maintain that hard exterior being forged in the fire, having to go through all of these heated situations of being bullied, of being ostracized, of being talked about and stuff like that. Eventually, that corny person is going to end up popping off <laughs> negatively or positively. But either way, that person that you looked at as corny, you know, that person is going to end up popping. And once that corny person starts to pop and now they're popping, they start to see the same individuals that put them in this pot. The same individuals that tried to put them in this box. Now they want to butter them up. Now they want to be all sweet to them and all of that type of stuff, like the caramel. But just like the box of Cracker Jacks, you know, that corny person, he knew since he was a seed, how powerful he was going to end up being. But they was just surrounded by a lot of people who, instead of these people seeing their worth as a seed, they had to wait till they got on and popping. And a lot of times they have to wait till an industry packages them up, give them a new name and a new label, a.k.a. Cracker Jacks. And it's only on the Cracker Jack box that it tells you that there's a prize inside of the box. See, look at all the things that you got to go through in order to be recognized as the prize. Now, this is another thing about corn. Corn isn't necessarily something that can be digested, which means that it don't matter how many times you chew that corn up when you swallow that corn and it goes through your intestines and all of that stuff and you end up shitting it out that corn is going to look the exact way that it looks when you put it in your mouth it's going to look that same exact way in the toilet <laughs> now again y'all wondering now what does this right here have to do with people who are considered corny well look at it like this one thing i've noticed about being corny or about being considered corny since the corn kernel the corn is considered kind of like a seed you know a seed you know that represents a baby which means that in a lot of ways corny is another word for innocence corny is another word for innocence and the older you get and the more of your innocence that you retain and the more you try to express certain levels of innocence to people who've been programmed to part with their innocence in order to shame you in order to guilt you in order to ridicule you you're called corny but just like that corn that you eat and you can't digest it that innocence that inner child energy that's actually your higher self it don't matter how much you try to chew it up no matter how much you try to hold it in and all that type of stuff you're never going to lose that because at the end of the day it's a reason why you have this strong level of innocence AKA it's nothing that a corny person could ever do to try to part away with those attributes that makes them corny. It don't matter how much money you got. It don't matter how much ice you got around your neck. It don't matter how many cars you got. It don't matter how much fame you got. It don't matter how many women you got. If you're someone who has been considered corny for the level of innocence that you've been able to obtain throughout your life. It would behoove you, number one, to start doing that shadow work. It's not going to be pretty, but instead of you trying to fit in with the quote unquote cool kids or whatever, these cool kids that's chewing you up, these cool kids who's putting you through all of this shit, all of that type of stuff, it will behoove you to be around and to find your tribe, your soul family. And it will behoove you to figure out what your purpose is, because obviously your purpose is is going to be something greater than the people around you who's trying to get you to assimilate to the hive mind, you know, get you to assimilate to the matrix way of thinking, to get you to stop thinking outside the box, to get you to stop using that sixth sense that made you so unique. Now, I talked about the seed corn, you know, about the plant, the plant that's called corn and how that 
correlates with being corny and how in a lot of ways being corny represents innocence it represents someone who's held on to a considerable amount of their innocence and they still want to do different things that they used to do in their innocence but they may be in an environment of people who had to grow up too fast you know like michael b jordan he just innocently wanted to be an actor he just innocently wanted to be a part of a pocket of society that is involved in masonry and you know he was down for that that's what he wanted to be but you know just like what she said they were in the hood they were in a low vibrational type of environment that people mamas probably told them you ain't shit you ain't gonna never be shit and as you can see she had that type of mentality you know she probably didn't think she was gonna be shit because if she did number one she would have had a totally different outlook and she would have been inspired and she would have been motivated by seeing young Michael B. Jordan with those headshots while everybody else was calling him names and stuff like that she would have been the one yo leave him alone yo don't 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 call him that don't call him that while y'all playing he is gonna be a star while y'all playing he is gonna end up being something great y'all watch and if she was that type of person in school if she was that type of girl if she had that type of motivating divine feminine type of mindset instead of being a part of the bullying class of people that would have been a totally different reunion that they would have had on that red carpet now what is it about corny people that annoys people what is it about being corny that annoys people now when we think about this we got to think about what is the other type of corn that you get <laughs> you know what is the other type of corn that you get well this type of corn is something that you get on defeat on defeat on defeat and it's like a annoying bump that you get on your toes and you can try to pop it but it's going to be extremely extremely painful now what are some what are some symptoms of why you would get a corn on your feet well one of the reasons why uh you would get corns on your feet is trying to feel shoes that you knew good and well wasn't meant for you to feel i'm gonna say it again a lot of times people get corns on their toes because they got shoes on that they know good and well that they're not supposed to have on i told y'all i'm a beast with these analogies <laughs> so what does this have to do with the reason why when you get older and you look at that corny person that actually made it and it annoys you and you feel defeated you got to think to yourself when you were that young spring chicken who had the whole world ahead of you and all of that type of stuff was you out here trying to feel shoes that you knew good and well you had no business being in and you did that for so long that when you got older those bad habits ended up catching up to you you were trying to keep up with the joneses you know you were trying to fit in to different uh caricatures and you were trying to fit in to different lifestyles and all of that type of stuff that you knew good and well you were bigger than that like you were you were actually bigger than these minute things but in order to fit in you would try to fit into these fake you know into these cheap type of caricatures and stuff like that and you did that for so long that now it's caught up with you and now you're facing defeat <laughs> you're you're facing defeat you're facing the negative effects of the corn on defeat and just like me talking about shadow work and stuff like that it gets to the point you know you've you've done this for so long now you got these corns on your feet now you're in pain when you walk and stuff like that you can't walk because of defeat and stuff like that and a lot of times depending on how bad it is a lot of times you got to have surgery to get those uh corns off your toes you know now you know you got to wear special shoes that's definitely not something that's aesthetically pleasing you got to wear certain things that are not aesthetically pleasing because you went the route that you did and now you have this issue with defeat so now i talked about the positives i talked about the negatives about someone who was looked at as being corny and they decided to try to fit in and now they're dealing with the negative aspects of it so now i, I kind of want to talk about the the many pseudonym names of being corny because this is another thing too um cornball that's 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 another thing that i'm gonna touch on right quick cornballs are created by enslaved women because another word for cornball is hush puppy and these cornballs these cornbread balls were created by the slave women 
and they would throw these corn balls at the dogs who were controlled by the slave masters you know aka you know this is this is where the police comes from and stuff like that you know to keep them off her trail and y'all can look this up about who created the cornball who created the hush puppies now what does this have to do with people who are considered corny or cornballs since we know that society and media for the most part the most vested interest is in women especially when we're talking about a controlled mental enslaved environment like school and for most guys that are in school the name of the game is to try to get with the most popular girl in the school which means that it's the women it's the girls who determine for the most part what's corny and what's not corny because you know you can be an old point dexter ass nigga but if you got a baddie on your arm you know if you got the head of the cheerleader team on your arm that alone made you popular so if the hottest girls in the school if they deemed you a cornball everybody talked shit about you because for the most part it was the girls who controlled that social hierarchy now it's all mental slavery it's all um being enslaved because we know outside of school all of those illusionary metrics that was used to determine if you was corny or cornball all of that stuff don't even matter in the real world but since we spend a huge chunk of the most vital years of our life in that mental enslaved school, a lot of times it's hard for you to shake those sentiments. It's hard if you were somebody who was looked at as corny in school and stuff like that your whole life. It's hard for you to just graduate from school and shake that because it's a mental, it's a mental type of slavery. And as men, we are a mental type of people. You know, that's 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 just who we are. So it was these girls that were enslaved and they're trying to run away from who they really are inside and all of that type of stuff. They create what is known as the cornballs and the cornballs always get ate up by the dog ass niggas, a.k.a. the jocks in school, a.k.a. the bullies in school, a.k.a. the drug dealers in school. All things that were controlled by the higher principalities in that school. So even the quote unquote dog ass niggas who were looked up to as the alpha males in this mental enslavement. And I hate to say it, but a lot of us as people, even though we graduated from high school, a lot of these uh, women, a lot of these guys still have this high school hierarchy mentality. Y'all still don't realize that all the things in the hood that made the cool kid or the jock cool are all things that are controlled by the government, like sports, like athletics, like being a rapper, like being a drug dealer, like being a scammer, like being a dope pusher, and all of these other type of professions that are really a poison to our community. Because as we know, and this always ends up happening, once school is out and everybody goes out into the real world and goes their separate ways and all that type of stuff, if that corny guy can stay the course and stay true to who he really is and or who she really is and all of that type of stuff. This always ends up happening. These people always end up outperforming in some type of way the people who were in high school or the people who were in school that named them corny. It's been very rare that I've seen it the other way around. Even if on an outward level, you may think that the person that called them corny may be on a fame level doing better than the corny person. When you really pull back those layers and you really put a microscope to that person's life and you see all of the negativity, all the, you know, skeletons in their closet, all the things that they had to go through to get that little piece of fame. And then you might see the corny guy or the corny girl, you know, they may not have the fame, you know, they may not have the notoriety, but their life is way more peaceful. Their life is way more stress-free. You know, they're able to go to sleep at night with a clear conscience. And at the end of the day, these are some of those creature comforts that we can forget about, you know, that we can neglect because of this, this matrix that programs you to feel like that you got to have certain things in order for you to feel content. You know, you got to have certain material things. You got to be on certain levels and all of that stuff in order for you in society to appear to be someone that got it going on, you know? And another thing that I always see 
I always see this. Why is it that, especially when it comes to the women, that woman, you know, who was a little girl, she had the glasses on. She was the one that took the longest to gain her voluptuousness and stuff like that. She was always turned down for the thought in school. She was always turned down for the who was maybe on the cheerleading team and all of that stuff. And then this chick, she got older. She's staying her course doing good in her life and when she got older that's when she started to get voluptuous she started to fill out now she's one of those type of women to wear even though she may not wear those fashion over real raunchy type of clothes even in her modesty she looks extremely stunning to the point where you knew if she wore something that could show her cleavage or if she wore something that could show her curves she would shut down all of those women all of those girls who called her corny back in school now they want to be her friend you know now the guys are trying to slide into her dms and you know you should forget about the past you should let it go all of that type of stuff and that's another thing that i'm seeing in this subject as well so i just wanted to bring that part up so one of the pseudonym names and this is like one of the main ones when you're talking about being corny is the word nerd now i don't have these definitions in front of me and stuff like that so i'm just going completely off of memory and i hate to say it but most of these pseudonym names that i'm going to use are things that were programmed either through social media either through tv either through different tv shows and different movies and stuff like that and black people and white people got totally different programming when we talk about this type of thing and this is why in a lot of cases a lot of the corny black girls who still got that vitriol because she still remembers how she was ostracized and talked about a lot of the corny black girls end up with white guys and a lot of the corny black guys who still have that vitriol against the black girls that talked about them and ostracized them a lot of them find solace in women of other races because this was a programmed division between us and it's up to us to stop this but it's something that has to be done early you can't talk about somebody and put them down and all of that when they were in their innocence and then just expect them to just welcome you with open arms when they get older and now they're popping and you're not that's not how it goes so when we talk about a nerd you know this is someone who's extremely proficient in things like math and things like science and things like computers and technology and stuff like that and they're determined to be the best that they can be in those subjects now, when we talk about in the black community, being proficient in these type of things isn't really something that's going to make you popular in school. You know, when you're a nerd, a lot of times you don't even care about the pop culture trends. You know, you don't even care about this stuff. All you care about is being the best at math, being the best at science, being the best at technology, because, you know, one day this stuff that you're focusing on is going to be way more important than the shallow one dimensional stuff that everybody else is focused on and it's crazy because look at where the world is headed now you know the world is headed in a technologically advanced type of situation a lot of those physical jobs that you used to could hang your hat on are being taken away every year so a lot of these quote unquote nerds once upon a time was looked at as corny you know these these are some of the wealthiest people <laughs> you know, these are going to be some of the most wealthiest people in this new te technologically advanced world that we're coming in. You know, people like your Jeff Bezos, people like your Elon Musk, people like your Bill Gates and stuff like that. These definitely weren't people in school who were looked at as being cool or looked at as being popular. You know, I just hated that when it comes to the black community, our representation of this is Steve Urkel. But when it comes to the white community, their representation of this is Peter Parker. You know how how Peter Parker was the nerd, but then he turned into Spider-Man. You know how Tony Stark had a little nerd in him. Bruce Wayne had a little nerd in him to be able to create that technology and, and all that type of stuff. And in their universe, in their world and stuff like that, they grow up and they become the super hero. They become the superhero that saves the world and gets the girls and all of that type of stuff. Whereas with Steve Urkel, look at the different stereotypes with Steve Urkel. Look at the different stereotypes with Carlton from Fresh Prince and all that type of stuff. You rarely had different sitcoms and uh, different things with black people on it where the nerd was actually the one who ended up being the victor. The nerd was the one that actually became 
the superhero, the superhero. And in most cases, the nerd doesn't try to fit in with the cool kids because the nerd understands that the things that make the cool kids cool are beneath him in a lot of cases. Now, you know, when we talk about movies and shows and stuff like that, you see how the nerd is the one that always get bullied, you know, and a lot of times the only way that the nerd can get any type of help from the bullies or anything like that, you know, the nerd has to end up doing the homework of the bullies or whatever. And then he can use that as leverage like on everybody hates chris so that's one pseudonym name of being corny another one is called the lame now the definition of being lame when we talk about in a medical type of situation is someone who can't hardly walk because of foot pain or because of a issue with their feet so what does this mean because we all know that these words they carry the same energy even though you may be taught a different definition when you have a specific path that's only meant for you to walk on, but that path isn't necessarily a conventional path that everybody else around you deems popular. So you start to feel defeated trying to figure out and discover your own path or your own lane that you need to go. Every time you try to go over to the path that everybody else is on, because of the way your particular structure was set up, you look like you don't belong in that circle. Like you look like you don't belong in that path. And that's what makes you lame. The lame guy is the guy who has to do the biggest amount of shadow work because they got a specialized path that they're supposed to go. But like I said, in this social world that we live in, where a lot of times you don't even find out about stuff like shadow work and all of that until you're fully grown and you probably made a lot of mistakes in your life and you probably faced a lot of defeat and stuff like that. Every time you try to do what the cool kids do, every time you try to get with the type of woman that everyone has been socially programmed to look at as hot, as sexy, as fine, all that type of stuff. Not only do you get looked like a lame, you get treated like a lame. See, you were created for a special purpose for a reason, which means that your body, which means that your being was created to walk a certain type of path. So if you don't know that and you try to leave that path and you voluntarily put yourself into the rat race you voluntarily put yourself into the dog eat dog world where people don't obey the rules ain't nobody gonna care about you you gotta have a tough skin about you all that type of stuff people can sense when you got chinks in your armor and all that type of stuff you wonder why you get pushed around you wonder why you get tripped up and all that type of stuff and you wonder why it's harder for you to bounce back than for everybody else to bounce back because just because you think you're going to fit in because you're fooling yourself doesn't mean that the people around you who actually do this, who actually live this life for real, can't sense that you're living a lie. And that's what makes you lame. And that's what makes you corny. Because if you could just create your own lane and you could just be in your lane and find your own lane, you can be the alpha in your lane. And that might be on a spiritual level why you chose to come here to create a different lane so that other kids you know other children is growing up and they got the same type of goals and aspirations and stuff like that now because of the path that you blazed they can have a much easier time being who they really want to be being who they were purposed to be because you created that lane for them and then you become the trendsetter now when we talk about michael b jordan and different other people in that same type of vein even though he wanted to be an actor even though he got star power which is clear to see which is plain to see because hollywood has a monopoly on what makes you a star they got the monopoly on the popularity of the movie industry and all that type of stuff because of the power that we give to it michael b jordan was kind of forced you know if he wanted to be a star if he wanted to be popular he had to be forced into this mainstream Hollywood lane where he have to play these roles and constantly come off as something that he's really not because, you know, we can see that he's a good actor. You know, we can see that he can be very good. He can be very powerful at this. But the reason why he's looked at as a lane is because look at the other actors, the other black actors, you know, compromised Hollywood actors that he has to compromise his craft to try to emulate so that he can be considered for these big movies and considered for these big productions and all of that simply because 
there's really not a such thing as a independent movie circuit lane that you can put yourself in that'll get you the same type of notoriety that'll get you the same type of fame that'll get you the same type of star power as Hollywood so this is why he was able to get with Lori Harvey because you know he's the it guy because of the roles that he had to play and stuff like that but with him still having that degree of innocence about him that makes him quote-unquote corny he couldn't see that the only reason why Lori Harvey was with him like that was because of how good of a look it would have been for her and he didn't really understand how this Hollywood game works when it comes to the women that's trying to make it in this game as well and that's what made him come off as being lame even when he tries to exert some quiet dominance in that red carpet interview he still looked at his lane because at the end of the day the main thing that someone could say is the only reason why you're popping is because of hollywood who are you really when we take this star power away when we take this hollywood away when we take all of this stuff away who are you under all of that and if you haven't created a separate lane for yourself and that's for anybody out there who's looked at his lane you can front all day long and you fronting and you flashing can get you noticed by the mainstream but if you don't take that and create your own lane where you can be the god or the goddess in that lane and bring other people up in that lane bring some traffic to that lane so now you're looked at as a conductor you too are going to be looked at as someone that's lame now this is the other pseudonym name that's also looked at as corny and this is one of the pseudonyms that i was called and that's a geek you know you have different types of geeks you know i was called a band geek <laughs> but you see how i was able to turn that band geek into my own identity called mr band clap created my own entity band clap tv and media created products and different things different services that people can benefit off of like issues world like my readings like my dj services and artist interviews and all that type of stuff and it all comes from one central gift which is my gift of music and alchemy because music and alchemy goes hand in hand so a lot of times uh when you're a geek you know this is someone who have a gift and a specific type of interest and it's pretty much a life is what you make it type of situation because you can use this interest that made you a geek and you could turn this into something that can make you an alpha if you want to. And a lot of times as a geek, you staying true to your identity and stuff like that. You'll be able to create multiple lanes and stuff like that with your gift. And you'll actually be able to attract different women if you're a guy, you know, different guys if you're a woman, you know, different people, places and things that are catered to your specific gift. And sometimes, you know, these could be people who were popular, you know, people who are popular or whatever. So, you know, for example, with me, I always talked about how I came up in the era to where it don't matter if you was a jock. It don't matter if you was a nerd. It don't matter if you was popular or not. All the guys, for the most part, we all like Dragon Ball Z. Back then, when I was coming up, when you was in school, when you was in the library and stuff like that, printing out color pictures was expensive <laughs> you know sometimes it'll cost like one or two dollars for you to print out a color picture so if you was in school and you had color pictures of dragon ball z back then and stuff like that you know you was the man and you could trade those pictures for different resources and different things that you needed and don't let you be someone who at home your mom or dad had a color printer at home bruh you was the man at school and you knew the websites to get these limited edition pictures and all of this type of stuff now you was even more popular if you knew how to draw these characters if you knew how to draw it and make it look exactly like what's on the picture that alone made you popular you know secretly even the popular girls like sailor moon you know secretly even the popular girls liked uh certain animes and stuff like that you know girls love tattoos so if you was a quote-unquote comic book geek and you knew how to draw real good and you never lost that ability to draw there were so many different trades because that's a skill you know you've been doing this since you was young so now you got a skill and you can take that skill and turn that into a trade and turn that trade into a service so now you can turn that into being an animator like what i'm doing you can turn that into being a tattoo artist you can be one of the guys who knows how to make decals for cars 
for sports cars and stuff like that. You could be a graphic designer that can create logos for different companies and stuff like that. If you got that skill to draw and you was a comic book geek, there are so many different lanes that you can go in. And no matter what lane you choose, there's going to be a bunch of hot girls in that lane because a lot of the finest women love anime. A lot of the finest women love tattoos. Even when it comes to the guys, if you was a, a geek in school who knew how to draw and you become a tattoo artist, the thugs and the gang members, they're going to be your biggest clientele. And this is how you can barter. This is how you can barter your services out. Like, yo, if I do this tattoo for you for a discounted price or whatever, you know, you're going to be my protection. You're going to be my muscle. Or if it's, you know, certain things, you know, I don't want to say online, but if it's certain certain other things that you want, like, yo, I can do your tattoo for you, but I need this or I need you to front me this or that. And you do a good job on a tattoo. And now everybody like, yo, bro, man, that tattoo hard, man. Who did your tattoo? Like, man, oh boy, did my tattoo. Oh, dude, they used to draw uh, Dragon Ball Z pictures in school back in the day. Man, I knew that. I knew that man was going to be doing something like this when he grew up. And a lot of times the same clientele that you had as a kid end up following you on into your adult life. You just got to keep at it. A lot of times the geeks are the people that you better not sleep on because all it takes is for them to get some new information about a lane that they can go in and they could go from drawing anime to actually creating the anime that your girl loves so much. Especially you got chicks like Megan Thee Stallion talking about anime and all that type of stuff. And then I come to them like, yo, I'm an animator. I make anime. I'm a art director for your favorite anime that you be watching all the time. Man, you know how much poom poom that's going to get you? <laughs> Even someone who's a music geek. You might start out playing in a band like me. You know, you might start out playing in the church, being a church musician. Man, y'all don't know. I know so many guys who play drums at church, you know, play the piano at church. And they be telling me stories about all the poom poom that they get behind the scenes being a church musician so don't sleep don't sleep on the geek don't sleep on the geek because a lot of times they're going to be the ones that you're going to have to get your services from so the geeks they need the most encouragement you can turn that musical talent into being a dj and who doesn't need a dj for their wedding who doesn't need a dj for their event and all that stuff and it'll be super super dope if you stayed cool with that geek in school who became the top dj and now you can say proudly like, yo, I'm going to have so-and-so DJing at my wedding. I'm going to have so-and-so DJing at my grand opening for my club or whatever. And they like, yo, you mean D DJ so-and-so? They're like, yeah, man. You know, we, we came up in school together. And he was one of the dudes that was beating on the table and stuff like that. All the girls was dancing and all this stuff because he would make these beats on the table with, with his pencil and all that type of stuff. And now this dude DJs for Beyonce or, you know, this dude DJs for young Jeezy or whatever and me and him stayed cool through the years and he was like man it's nothing you know shit I'll do it for you for free just because a GP you know just because we cool like that how many of y'all out there have this type of story you know I got people that I was in the band with that's on tour with Beyonce right now I got people that I was in the band with that's been on tour with Nicki Minaj right now so when it comes to the geek a lot of times like I said it's life is what you make it the reason why they're so focused on what they're focused on because this is an actual gift that they have and if they can stand the course they can turn this gift into multiple services into multiple trades this gift turns into a skill and with the right type of determination and tenacity this can lead into the ultimate sovereignty for these individuals now you have another uh pseudonym name and um this person this person is kind of the opposite of the geek and this person is called the dork now, a lot of times with a dork, you know, this is someone who's a product of his environment, you know, um, might not have had the best of things and stuff like that. He knows that he doesn't want to fit in with the cool kids, but he doesn't have that um, capacity within himself. Like he may not have just a outward gift like the geek that he can just outwardly express and stuff like that you know sometimes the dork he's in the situation that he's in simply because of lack of information simply because of lack of a better environment a lot of these renegade kamikaze type of street dudes always on go always ready to shoot something up and all that type of stuff a lot of these kids were dorks in school i hate to say it but a lot of your law enforcement 
a lot of them were dorks. And if they just had the right type of people around them, if they just had the right type of information, if they just had the right type of knowledge, dorks, a lot of times, they got to dig even deeper within themselves for them to pull out what their true purpose is, like what they're truly supposed to do. A lot of times, dorks can be mistaken as the NPCs, the NPCs that haven't been inhabited by a demonic force that can use them for whatever type of agenda that the hive mind wants to use them for but if that dorky guy or that dorky girl can get the right type of information can get the right type of knowledge they can have some of the most motivational 360 type of successes that if there's still people that knew them from in the past or if they showed you some pictures of them in the past or something like that you wouldn't believe that that was them you know and also another word for dork is loser you know the loser slash dork that's kind of the same type of definition and last but not least, I know there's probably other names, but the last name that I want to cover in this is the weirdo. Now, this one right here is a very, very slippery slope. This is a very slippery slope because another pseudonym name that I could put here is also the creep. And I think there's a song like, I am a creep, I am a weirdo, <laughs> you know, and a lot of times, you know, these people can spiral out of control. You know, they start going into certain rabbit holes and all of this type of stuff. You know, they end up developing these weird fetishes. You know, they end up in developing these real weird hobbies and these weird type of passions and all of that type of stuff. Things that are extremely, extremely non-conventional. Now, when we talk about on a spiritual sense, a lot of the people that you would classify as a weirdo, a lot of times these are people who was just born into the wrong time. These were probably people that in their past lives, the thing that you will call them a weirdo about is actually in that past life, what made them so popular, you know, what made them so famous, you know, what made them so needed in the community or needed in the society or needed within the government structure that they came from. And not everybody loses all of their memories and loses all of those type of things when they get reborn especially if it's something that got so much energy behind it something that made you so powerful in a past life but in this life you're in a different time you know you're in a different era so you're trying to do a lot of those things now you're trying to express interest in these type of things now it makes you look like a weirdo when a lot of cases the people who are considered creeps a lot of people who are considered weirdos are just extremely extremely misunderstood and a lot of times the ones who are super, super far gone, if they were cared for and if they were noticed and stuff like that when they were a lot younger, maybe they could have been saved as far as maybe they could have been able to create a lane for themselves that would be accepted in this society. But, you know, it wouldn't be something that would necessarily be a detriment to their identity. A lot of times the creeps and the weirdos are uh, casted away, you know, casted out of society and when you're casted out of society, there's a, another society that's outside of this society. And the more you indulge in that, the more and more impossible it would be for you to dwell within this world, you know, dwell within this society. And there's many, many different instances that would make you a weirdo, whether it's you being introduced to certain people, places, things, situations before you were supposed to be introduced to them. So now you've developed a certain type of curiosity towards different things and you're in an environment where you may be the only one that has experienced that or whatever. So now you're looked at as a weirdo because you're trying to express this outwardly to people who are just not gonna understand who you are. Like they're just not gonna understand, like why do you like this? Why are you like this? A lot of times weirdos and creeps, they have a hard time expressing themselves, expressing their feelings, you know, they have a hard time expressing their urges. They don't learn certain moral boundaries and all that type of stuff. So, for example, you know, you might have a guy, he might have had a, a babysitter as a child. And, you know, that babysitter might have introduced him to some sexual things that he had no business being introduced to. So now, you know, he's in elementary school or he's in middle school and he got certain urges and certain things that he don't know how to communicate it. So instead of him, you know, walking up to the little girl like, hi, how you doing? This is my name. You know, I just thought you were cute, you know, whatever. 
he might just stare at her or he might smell her seat or <laughs> do something creepy and weird <laughs> which puts him farther and farther and farther away from society so this might either turn him into an incel or a sexual deviant the older he gets and since there is not a lot of you know moral boundaries when it comes to this this might end up blossoming into other different fetishes and curiosities for other different immoral sexual things and all of that and on a super super extreme level you might find out that this person was on the flight log to the island of El Wondry <laughs> you know I ain't even got to say it so a lot of times you know the creep and the weirdo they need the most therapy you know they're misunderstood they don't really have a lot of people that they can talk to that's not going to judge them they just have a totally different outlook of life and all of that because of the situations that happened to them as a child or them having some primordial impulses or some primordial thoughts or whatever and they just don't understand how to communicate this they just don't understand how to get it out they don't understand how to express these primordial thoughts and these primordial feelings and all of that they don't know how to express this in this society where it can be looked at as something normal you know but you know everybody has their path you know everybody has their path everybody have a certain lane you know everybody have a certain purpose that they're meant to do so in closing never let anyone never let anything make you want to turn your back on your innocence i don't care what they call you I don't care if you're called a lame. I don't care if you're called corny. I don't care if you're called a dork, a geek, you know, a, a you know, weirdo, all of these things. Because I promise you, most of the people that's going to call you these things, they ain't shit themselves. They're in the matrix. You know, they're zombies to this society. And, you know, a lot of times if you stand a course, you're going to end up providing the service and they're going to be paying for your service. You know, they're going to be standing in line uh you know, like Michael B. Jordan in a couple days, you know, they're going to be standing in line to watch your movie that you're the superstar in. They're going to be standing in line to buy your shoes, to buy your clothes, to buy your rap song. They're going to be subscribed to Crunchyroll. They're going to be subscribed to these sites so they can look at your anime. Because like I always say, you know, I don't care, you know, what nobody say about this, you know, alpha, beta, you know, all these Greek terms and all of that. I've always preached on this channel, your innocence is what makes you alpha your innocence is what makes you alpha no matter what your innocence is what makes you alpha and if y'all can heed that message my friends you will be glad that you did all right y'all so yeah this ended up being a long one <laughs> this ended up being a long one um it just feels good to be back man i just i just had to give y'all my my two cents on this you know this is the metaphysics of being corny you know y'all know um you know, when I talk about something, I'm going to give you all a deep dive It's, it's never going to be on the surface. So I, I hope that y'all got something from this. You know, I hope y'all took something from this. I hope I was able to paint a beautiful, uh, deep picture in your mind about this. And um, I'm so happy to say that I got my cards back. Shout out to Godfather Tank B. He was able to send me my cards. So I'm doing this sale uh, March. I'm going to do half off for the month of March for my card readings. So if you want to get a, a card reading from me. As you can see on my Bandclap TV website, if you go to services and you go to On Point or Risha Tarrant card readings, I'm doing a half off sale for the month of March. So if you want to partake in that, you can schedule it on my website. It's www.bandclaptv.com. You can also go on that website to see my animated series called Issues World. You know, any donations uh, that you all are able to give me, all of the donations that you all sent to me, it goes to uh, me being able to, to get better equipment, all these type of things. So if you see what I've done and, and y'all believe in this as much as I do, definitely support, definitely donate. And I appreciate all of you all who have donated so far. You know, it means the world to me. And, um, you know, like I always say, Band Clap TV, we out. And no matter what, you've got to stay shiny. What's up, y'all? I hope y'all enjoyed that video. And if you stay to the end, I appreciate you. Also, if you haven't already, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, I want to redirect you to my Instagram page. I don't promote my Instagram page a lot, but, um, as my subscriber count and things like that rise, 
due to things like shadow banning and stuff like that. I'm hearing that a lot of people aren't getting my notifications when I go live on YouTube and stuff like that. So for all things Bandclap TV, my Instagram page and my story are going to have all of the notifications and things like that when it comes to when I'm going live, when I'm going, um, you know, when I'm releasing videos, when I'm releasing content. Also on my Instagram page, um, if you're curious about my reviews for my readings and stuff like that, as you can see on my Instagram, I have a lot of different testimonials and stuff like that. Um, for those who don't know of me as an artist, I also have videos of me performing and stuff like that. I'll be putting out more stuff like that very, very soon. So I'm just trying to um, get as many people right now to go ahead and follow me on Instagram. That is Bandclap TV. And also my Facebook and Snapchat, Bandclap TV as well. All right, y'all. I appreciate y'all. And like I always say, no matter what, you got to stay shining.